guys, Provo1701 here, and today we're going to talk about the 80s Daleks. And my question is, what do you think is the weakest 80s Dalek story? This one is tricky. This one is actually really hard to do because all three of the 80s Dalek stories are great. They're all really good. They, <clears throat> all three of them are some of the best Dalek stories we've ever gotten. So it's weird to try to pick the one that you would call the worst or the weakest when all three of them are so good. It's like me trying to pick my least favorite kind of cheesecake when I absolutely love most kinds of cheesecake. Um, so it's really hard, but I can also say that none of those three are just perfect. None of them are necessarily without faults. They all have little things that bug me. It doesn't stop them from being great episodes. They're still great episodes, all three. But they have little things like Remembrance has a few issues where uh, the little girl can be a little bothersome. Now, the actress playing her most of the time is doing a really good job. Every now and then she does something where I'm like, she's also a child actress. But a lot of times she's nailing it just for what she's doing with a look. It's really impressive. Uh, but she's just there a little much. And then that little musical theme with her, I think that actually irritates me more. It's just that little kid's theme that keeps playing with her, just grates on me. Uh, the resolution to the cliffhanger when the, when the doctor is on the stairs, that's a good cliffhanger, but the resolution to it when it takes the Dalek 15 minutes to get up the stairs and then another 15 minutes to destroy the door, and I'm sitting there going... Hmm, that's a little bothersome... Uh, Retroactively, it's kind of bothersome because if the Doctor destroys Scaro here, how come we see Scaro and a lot of stuff in modern Doctor Who? I'm a little confused by that. So that retroactively doesn't quite... It's a, it's a little thing. There's a couple other little nitpicks. Um, the Dalek at the beginning of the story looks like it's being remote controlled the way it's running around. It just... But it's still a great story. I like Remembrance of the Daleks. It, it tackles... I like how it... <clears throat> I like the conversation between... Uh, Jeffrey from the Fresh Prince of Bel Air and uh, the Doctor about ripples and how little things can affect changes. That's a cool conversation. I love watching Ace beat up a Dalek. I love how it also very subtly tackles the racism of the time with her and the sign and her being disgusted by it. I love seeing the special weapons Dalek and seeing it fight. I love the Dalek Civil War in general, so I love seeing more of the Dalek Civil War here. It's a great story, but it's just I have those little nitpicks, probably a couple things I'm not uh, remembering. Oh, and also it has Michael Sheard in it. I love when Michael Sheard shows up in Doctor Who. Uh, Revelation of the Daleks. Most of the stuff going on with, is it Clive Swift? Is that his name? From Voyage of the Damned. Uh, most of the stuff going on with him and the nurse that's infatuated with him just feels like it's taking up time and doesn't need to be there. The whole thing with her loving him and then her being mad at him, then her being used and her wanting to kill him. First off, the actress isn't doing much for me in the part. She doesn't have a lot to work with, to be fair. Clive Swift is great in the part. Are you picking your nose? I love that. But I just, it feels like it doesn't need to be there. Like you could trim all that out and have a much tighter story. I enjoy most of the stuff. The stuff with Eva Braun is good, even though her assistant taking 15 minutes to die is a little... I kept expecting him to finish his drink. Um... The stuff with the assassin and his squire, I love. I love the assassin and the squire. They're great. Love them. Wish there was a way <clears throat> I could have them again somehow. I mean, you can't. They died, but I, I loved them. And it's a dark story. I love the dark subject matter of the story. It's a dark. It's a very dark story in a very dark season uh, with Perry basically having to kill the one like leper guy that attacked the doctor practically and her having to deal with that. And then the woman that's trying to find her dad and her guy friend that's with her, I like. I like that not only we explore their story, but they get killed. They, you know, like we spend this time getting to know these characters and then they meet a sad fate, which is very fitting for season 22. You know, the fact that they end up dying, they don't make it out. That fits for this kind of dark story. The dark subject matter of how the, doc, the Davros is making the Daleks here. Love that. It's got a lot of strong stuff going on in it. Just like I said, it's got a little bit of fat there that needs trimming out. And then with uh, Resurrection of the Daleks, my main issue is the uh, is the special effects, or the lack of special effects. Uh, I've, I cite a lot of times Resurrection of the Daleks is my favorite of the three. Honestly, it's just more which one I'm in the mood to watch, because they're totally very different stories. Uh, so it's more which one am I just 
in the mood to watch at any given time, but if pressed, I'd probably call Resurrection my favorite from a story standpoint. I do like the story a lot. It's also a very dark story. Season 21 is also a very dark season. Season 21 is a lot darker than season 20. It really is. Uh, with, you know, famously a higher body count than the Terminator, because so many people get killed, and it's it makes sense why Tegan wants to leave at the end. They go through a lot in this story. It makes sense why she's just burned out and ready to, for it to stop, and that's not fun anymore. I get it, especially with Nyssa being gone, and I think she missed Nyssa. It's a good story. It's well executed for the most part. I love the location work. I love the sets for Resurrection. I love the story in general, but the special effects let it down, especially not having enough laser effects. We know how Prowl is about his laser effects. It needs the updated effects. It is, <coughs> if I only get one more story with updated effects, I want it to be Resurrection of the Dallas. It needs them. That's my main issue with it is the special effects. If they give me updated effects, that one will probably be the clear winner of the three. So all of that being said, it's hard to pick one that's the weakest when they're all really good and have so much going for them. And the one I would pick it as the weakest would just depend on my mood and what I'm looking for. The one that's hardest for me to watch would be Resurrection of the Daleks, which is probably my favorite, but it's hard for me to watch without with the regular effects now. It just is. And on the other hand, the one I consider the weakest story-wise is probably Remembrance, while still being very good, it's relatively speaking, would be Remembrance. A part of me wants to call... Remembrance the weakest, but on the other hand, the one that story-wise that could have the most edited out to tighten it up is Revelation of the Daleks. So I could call it the weakest. So each one of them is the weakest story of the de da the weakest Dalek story of the decade for me, comparing on what criteria I'm going by. The hardest one for me to watch at the moment, Resurrection, because of the effects. The one that has the weakest actual story, Remembrance. The one that has the most excess that needs to be edited out and cut down, Revelation. So it's really hard for me to pick. I don't really have a choice. It depends on what we're talking about. If push came to shove, especially considering which one I want to watch depends on my mood, because again, they're very different stories. If push came to shove, I'd probably call Remembrance the weakest. But even then, I'm like, because it depends on what I'm going by. So that's kind of my thoughts on it. I want to know what you think of everything I've talked about and which one you would call the weakest and why. And whether you're like me, it just depends on what you're looking at uh, would determine which one you think is the weakest. So comment down below. Let's talk about it. Don't forget to click the like button and the subscribe button and all the other fun stuff that's down in the video description. Links to the Patreon, links to the Amazon wish list, the Amazon UK wish list, and the PO box are all down there. I want to give a shout out to Colin Coney, who of course is one of my top tier patrons. I do appreciate his support, as I do the support of all of my patrons and YouTube members. Every one of you is very much appreciated. Most importantly, thank you for watching.